Alrighty, folks, back at the beginning of January 2023 to kick off the new year, I flew down to Austin, Texas for what was really my first travel videography trip. And I am someone that has like almost never traveled before. I've really been on a plane for three different trips. I've been on a plane like, I don't know, 12 times if you count all the connecting flights and whatnot, but I don't travel a lot. And the last time I traveled before this was about two years ago. And so there was a lot involved with this. And I watched a whole bunch of videos about traveling with camera gear about what the cost of it is blah 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 and i wanted to sit down and basically make my own variation of that to show exactly what something like this entails so in this video i'm going to talk about the gear that i took with me uh what the project actually was and then i'm going to break down the costs of what the trip actually was all things considered so here we go so first of all, the video was an event that one of my clients was putting on. It was this sort of boot camp style training event where we went down and everybody got to do a whole training exercise together. We spent the morning in Austin, Texas at a park down there doing different exercise training. And then we all had a few hours to ourselves to go explore Austin a little bit, do lunch. And then we all met up again at a hotel later, did a mastermind sort of class lecture type of thing. And then we all had dinner together and it was a great time then we went home the next day so i flew down on friday of the week that i went down and then stayed in an airbnb did all our stuff saturday stayed in the airbnb again came back home on sunday and a lot of this was paid for so what i paid for on the trip or what i have the cost for anyway to break down for you is the airfare my checked bags parking i did pay for travel insurance when i bought the plane ticket and then just a couple of refreshments and i will say too that this trip was the price were kind of all over the place because this was on very short notice. I learned like the Monday before the Friday that I left that I was actually going to do this. So anyway, let's get into the camera gear. So for this trip, I took two Sony a7 IVs, two 24 to 70 lenses. One was my Sigma and one was a 24 to 70 G Master that I was borrowing from somebody else, an 85 millimeter G Master lens. And I took all my audio gear. I took the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus. I took the uh, Tascam DR10Ls. I took all my SD cards and all that type of stuff of course. And then I took my glide cam because I found that that was easier to pack than my gimbal. And because I'm still just more of a glide cam guy than I am a gimbal guy. I bought two new tripods that were kind of made for travel that I was also able to shove into a suitcase. And that comes down to how I did it. So I have one of those, it's not the Pelican 1510, I think is the one that's supposed to be carry on size, but it's like an off brand of the same thing. And I use that for all my main camera gear with the Trek pack divider system in it. And so I had the cameras in there. I had the lenses in there. I had batteries in there. I had my drone with me, my Air 2S. All of that was in that case. And one of the issues that I did run into and that you will run into when traveling with camera gear is lithium ion batteries they don't want those to go below the plane so you have to have them in your carry-on or in your personal item and in my particular case I ended up finding out that I was on a very small plane as my first flight and as my last flight so what ended up happening was that they ended up doing like the valet checked bag type of thing where they just red tagged it at the door and then said hey that carry-on that you brought with you is actually going to go under the plane do you have any e-cigarettes in there do you have any lithium ion batteries blah 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 and I told them I said this is all electronic this is all camera gear. I'd really love it if this did not go below the plane. They still put it below the plane and they made me take all the lithium ion batteries out of the carry-on and put them in my personal item. Everything ended up working out okay. But just know that if you're going to be getting on a smaller plane, flying out of a smaller airport, maybe into a bigger hub and then connecting, that something like that might happen. But then outside of the Pelican case i used just pretty much a normal suitcase and in my normal suitcase that i was planning on checking and putting under the plane was where i had my tripods my glide cam and basically anything that wasn't electronic and could afford to be thrown around a little bit and overall i ran into no issues with any of this and then of course i had a personal item i actually used a camera backpack that is you know backpack sized if you go on the airlines sites you can usually find some measurements in mine which was like just inside the measurement for what they wanted for a personal item and in my personal item, I basically had my clothes and that type of thing, like my actual personal stuff that I needed. And I actually put one of my lenses in the personal item just because I had one lens too many to actually fit in the carry-on. So that's how I did all that. So how much did this trip cost me? Well, my airfare costed $785.40, which was expensive for this trip. Again, because of the timing of it, I did see on Google or whatever. It was like the average cost for this trip is 350 bucks or something like that. So it was almost double, but 
I spend $785.40 just on the airfare, and then you can add $37.49 because I did upgrade my seat on one of the four flights that I was on, which brought the total for my airfare to $822.89. And then for my checked bag, I paid $30 twice. I paid for a checked bag on the way to Austin, and I paid for a checked bag on the way back from Austin, so that's another 60 bucks total. For parking at the airport, I did drive myself to the airport. I had to pay $42 for parking, which was $14 a day for three days. And then I also decided to go for the travel insurance, which was an extra 59 bucks. And then I paid for a couple of like vending machine drinks. When I got to Austin, I bought like a lemonade out of a vending machine. And then on my way back home, I was in the Austin airport for about two hours before my flight, just because of the logistics of the way that the event worked. So that added up to be a total of $7.13 to get both of those refreshments. And all of that brings the total for this trip to $991.02. Now, I know what you're thinking. There had to have been more expenses involved here. You had to eat. You had to transport yourself around Austin. All of that was completely covered by my client. So I don't know what the exact price was of the Airbnb. And we shared it among a bunch of people. And then I don't know what the, exactly the price was of food or of refreshments or of anything like that. And they also rented a car and we all drove around together when we got down there. So you can look into the prices for that and add that to this $991 and two cent total. But I also took into consideration the fact that the airfare, the plane ticket itself was so much more expensive than it would have been under normal circumstances that I figure it kind of balances out. So if you're looking to do a trip like this, or if you've thought about traveling to do videography before, it's probably going to run you around $900 to $1,000, I would think, for a trip like this. Now, obviously, this was a domestic trip. I was going from Pennsylvania to Texas. But my biggest thing going into this, my biggest thing going into this trip was just I really had no idea. And I wanted to charge, and I'll talk about in a different video, pricing strategies and all that type of stuff. But when it came to my business as a whole, I want to come up with a travel fee. And I've never had any idea what to make that travel fee. Because I figure some travel can cost 800 bucks, other travel can cost three grand, other travel can cost 10 grand. So I would say if you're a videographer or you're doing any similar work, photographer, then your travel fee should reasonably be between $800 and $1,000, I would think, is I think if you're managing your expenses pretty well, you should be able to cover your travel with that much money. So hopefully this helps. I think that's about all I wanted to push through was like the, the just kind of the details of how the trip actually works, how I packed for it. Of course, there's a lot of other little nitty gritty things that you can ask me in the comments if you really want to know about how this trip worked, how it all turned out. But I wanted to make this video for those of you that are thinking about traveling as a videographer there are things to look into if you're traveling with camera gear also the last thing i forgot to mention this i did not do this on this trip but i do know that a lot of the airlines will let you get a flat rate checked bag so basically check bags go by weight a lot of the time or how many of them you have what you can do if you're a videographer is you can make a media pass for your company or you can get one if you work for another company you can ask them if you can get a media pass to travel with and you can make these in photoshop i would make it look pretty legitimate, have your company name on there, have like a little barcode or QR code or something that leads to your site, have a professional looking picture of yourself on there and that type of thing. But if you have a media pass, what it gets you is a flat rate on checked bags. So it's like a flat rate of $50 or maybe a different price depending on the airline. But that allows us, so if you're carrying a lot more gear, like if you're carrying easy rigs or if you're carrying like a lot more gimbals or bigger tripods or whatever, you can check those bags and they'll all just be like 50 bucks per checked bag and that can save you a bunch of money. I also know that there's there's other stuff that I did not do in terms of like asking for priority boarding. I can sometimes help with those lithium ion batteries if you let them know up front like, hey, I have lithium ion batteries in my bag, so I need to make sure I like actually get overhead bin space. Some airlines will help you out on that front. They'll either let you board earlier or they'll just throw your... I've heard stories of people being asked to valet check their bag and then saying, no, there's lithium ion batteries in this. It can't go under the plane. And then them being like, okay, we'll throw it in the captain's closet or something like that. So just know all of this going into it. Ask around, ask the airline and don't be like me. I was scheduling this trip so last minute that I wasn't too concerned with any of that because I was more concerned about like how I was actually going to deliver the final product. That's what it is. Ask your questions down below and I will be coming back with more videos very soon.